This episode of the podcast is brought to you by the Tattooed Traveler YouTube channel. Join award-winning TV host and travel expert Todd Newton as he takes you coast to coast and around the globe to destinations like Paris, Rome, Bangkok, Hollywood, Mexico, New York, and so many more. Experience all the world has to offer by visiting the tattooedtraveler.com or subscribe on YouTube at the Tattooed Traveler. Welcome to the host with the most podcast. Podcast. And now, direct from the Razzle Dazzle Studios, here's the tan tattooed connoisseur of conversation. Todd Newton. At your service. Thank you for joining us here on the Toddcast. Maria Todd is here, as always, making the world a better place. And Maria, I was uh, just visiting my parents in St. Louis, and my dad was telling me baseball umpire stories. You know, he was an umpire for a long time. Went to the uh, Harry Wendelstead School of Umpiring in Clearwater Beach. Took me along as a baby. That's where I took my first steps here in uh, Clearwater. And he umped uh, big league, college, high school games. He used to tell me stories about, uh, you know, when, when I started traveling a lot for work, he would say, you think you got it rough, man. He goes, when I was on the road umpiring baseball, he goes, it would be two or three of us to a hotel room. There were no smartphones. If I wanted to call and talk to your mom, I, I had to call collect from these hotels and hope that your mom was home and hope that you were in the mood to get on the phone just so I could, you know, hear you gurgle, gurgle. But now we can, <laughs> now we can FaceTime and text whenever oh, we yeah. want. You know, he goes, everything was long distance and it was, it was tough. He goes, it was tough, but, uh, and then, you know, when my little brother was born a few years later, my mom's like, look, you got to come off. No more traveling for you. So he started doing, you know, local college and high school stuff just to scratch the itch. But my kids call my dad coach. So they like, you know, it's fun. You know, watching baseball can be kind of tedious and boring at times. But watching with my dad is cool because every pitch, you know, he'll be like, ah, come on, bad call bad call he just criticizes the umpires <laughs> even if they're showing a replay you know with the radar and the satellite and everything they can tell you if a pitch is right in the strike zone my dad's like ah oh, come on that was high and outside what are you doing come on but um, <laughs> i bring that up because as of friday umpires in uh the uh, major leagues are now enforcing a, a, a rule that has actually been around for quite a while it's called the foreign substance rule and when you hear foreign substance, you may think like, you know, tar on the bats or rosin on the ball or rosin on the bat, whatever. But it actually applies, Maria, to um, uh, baseball players cannot, you know, they can't wear bracelets. Uh, they can't wear anything that might uh, interfere with the play and anything on their ha it. hands or wrists or fingers. And uh, they've started enforcing wedding rings. Because ball players have started wearing their wedding rings during the game, which is technically it is a violation of the rule, and it was adhered to for many years. But as of late, past few seasons, you know, one player did it, another player did it. Umps were letting it go, but uh, as of Friday, they are saying no more wedding rings. And the rule, oh, thank you. Uh, the the rule specifically reads. A player may not attach anything to either hand, any finger, or either wrist. Uh, wrist, sorry. Could it cause an injury? What, what do you think the the reason being? Well, I don't know why they're saying wedding ring specifically. Although that might be the jewelry that you don't think of as jewelry when you think of things like oh, this other ring or bracelet or whatever, whatever. But a wedding ring is kind of the way the sentiment is attached to yeah. it, and they're probably getting some heat from the wife. Yeah. Why aren't you wearing your wedding ring? Yeah, you trying to let are. people think you're single? All these groupies are coming up to you and you're not wearing a wedding ring? I always thought but, you know, th those big chains, like with the big cross, if you're, if you're sliding head first and that cross you know, happens to catch in the dirt and go right into your throat, you know, I, I would, oh. let's get rid of the chains too, I would think. Well, I know my brother plays basketball and he's not allowed to have any jewelry on mm. because of that. It might catch on somebody's shorts or catch on somebody's jersey or whatever. Yeah, could really do some damage. If we have any umpires or referees who are subscribers, listeners, uh, send us an email at toddnewtononline.com. Or if you're listening to us on our YouTube channel, just uh, drop us a note in the comments there. Let's get back to the talk that will keep you talking. This is the host with the most 
Toddcast with Todd Newton. Yes, and don't forget to get your copy of my books, Life in the Bonus Round, or The Host with the Most. Award-winning autobiographies, Maria Todd, available on Amazon and at ToddNewtonOnline.com. All proceeds benefit our friends at the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Disease Research. Staying on this deal in Argentina, we were telling the story of a, a little road rage thing where, you know, two guys driving down the road. One does, I guess one was probably riding the other guy's butt a little bit, staying a little close. And I, that can get you worked up, you know, because you're, yeah. you're concerned. If you have to pump your brakes, this guy's going to slam into you. Well, the middle finger started flying. These two guys pull over into a supermarket parking lot and they fight. And turns out one of the guys is a biter. Starts biting the other guy on the thigh and bites the tip of his finger off. Now, ah. I was thinking after we were talking about this, Maria, you know, whenever somebody gives you the middle finger, isn't it funny how much it upsets us? It's just a finger. I know it has meaning, but isn't it almost stupid? How much See, meaning we give to a little appendage. You know, one finger. I've learned to just think people are saying, you're number one. Well, that's the funny thing. One finger over, and it's the greatest compliment in the world. You know, if I look yeah. at you and I hold up my index finger, I'm telling you you're the best. But if I put the index finger down and the middle finger comes up, I'm giving you the ultimate insult. It is just the dumbest thing. We've got to... We're going to have to go back and research how that became a thing. How the middle finger, popping up the middle finger became such an insult. And there's so many ways to give it. There, there is. Some people do it with the thumb out, you know, where it's almost like a, an L thing. And why do they call it flipping the bird? I don't know. Poor birds are yeah. getting a bad shake. Um, but, you know, when, when I've seen people... Uh, you know, when somebody gives somebody else the middle finger, somebody says, you know what? I'm going to shove that finger, you know, where the sun blah, don't blah, shine. Blah. But I've yeah. never, I've never heard someone say, you know what? I'm going to bite that finger right off. But it's, tr- <laughs> but it's true, though, isn't it? It's it's true. It that, is true. Yeah. It's true, true, true. Oh, it actually, uh, I just got an email that says the uh, the gesture hit the U.S. sometime in the 1800s. The Italian immigrants apparently brought it over. <laughs> here's your pizza and here's your finger. The first documented uh, photo of somebody flipping the bird was a picture for the Boston Braves in 1886. A guy named Charles Radborn. He was a pitcher in the early days of the major leagues and he was flipping the bird. What happened to bird. poor Chuck? <laughs> yeah, what, why does Chuck get to say? You know, why, did, why does Chuck get to say? But there's an interesting article. Uh, it's called The History. It's it's on the website. This is the link that was just emailed to us. The History of Yesterday.com. And it's the history of the, of the greatest and most powerful insult known to man. Huh. But I guess back in the old days, uh, in, in the early days of Italy, established in Italy, uh, the 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 middle finger was used to mainly symbolize sex, and it's oh I get it. It's supposed to represent the uh, the man's private part. Oh, yeah. So that's what, that's what. Look at that. I don't know how we got off on that that tangent, but that sure is a good one. That's a good tangent to get off on. I, and now we know. Uh, luckily, though, the uh, the the finger was reattached, so you know he can now continue on with his with his symbolage. Uh, we're going we're gonna to switch from the profane to the romantic. I'm going to tell you the colors of love and how they could enhance your relationship and your dating life. Ooh, I know what we're going to be talking about on a future episode for sure. Maria's ears just perked up. It's all we've got for you today. Thanks for being a subscriber. We appreciate you. Have a great one. Thank you for keeping the art of conversation alive. For more Todd, visit ToddNewtonOnline.com. And don't forget to rate and review the show today. The Host with the Most Toddcast is produced by The Host with the Most, LLC. All rights reserved.